Up next on Sims 4 TV News, beginners, get ready. Nard Villains Crash Course on Sims 4 Basics, plus real life examples of MC Command Center Mastery. So stay tuned for more Sims 4 updates and insights right here on your number one source. Don't miss it. Before we dive in, I got something awesome to share with you. This video is proudly sponsored by Insta Gaming, and that means big savings on your favorite games. Insta Gaming is a trusted online platform where you can find the best deals on a wide range of games. I'm partnered up with them to bring you exclusive deals and discounts. No more waiting for that end of the month check, cause I know you broke. But now, you can indulge in gaming goodness without breaking the bank. Just use my affiliate link, cup to unlock amazing game discounts using special codes. But wait, you know I got more. I'm running an exciting giveaway where you can win a game. Don't miss out. Enter now for a chance to win and I'll reveal the lucky winner at the end of the month. Just imagine getting your hands on The Sims 4 Dine Out or Sims 4 My Wedding Stories without spending a dime. You can find both my affiliate link and giveaway link in the video description below. So let's get back to simming and enjoy the thrill of a virtual world. Dag dag. Welcome back simmers and I guarantee you we got some new simmers out there in these sim streets. And we have our expert Nard Villain here to show us a little bit of tips on how to get our beginners into a game. Everything from learning about the graphics to autonomy. Alright you newbies. Welcome on in. I'm going to show you just a few little tips on navigating through the home screen right when you open up The Sims 4 game. And from there, we're going to also explore some of the in-game options when you're in gameplay. Alright, first things first is your main screen, right? Everybody see this screen a lot of times, but a lot of times I still get questions like, how do you start a new game? How do I load into existing games that I had in the, in the past? I'm gonna show you all that because you beginners are gonna learn something today. Resume. Resume, of course, that's the last game you opened up. So if I click resume, it's gonna basically open up the last game that I was playing. You also got your scenarios. If you play a scenario, this is gonna open up or create a new file for you. Load game, as I mentioned, you can load up a game and you're good to go. So as you can see here, I have quite a bit of games that I have been playing since I've had the Sims 4 game. All right, then if you wanna create a new game, you just click on new game, and that way you can start a whole new fresh game. And then also if you want access to the gallery, we also have a gallery feature right here on the main screen. We also have ways that we can get to the gallery within the game, but if you're on the main menu, you can also get to the gallery from the main menu simply by clicking on gallery. And here's my favorite, options. Now once you're in the option screen, you're going to get a little menu here. The only thing that's important right now is basically game options. Within game options, this is going to allow you to adjust graphics, audio, can't your game camera, uh, pack settings, environment, gameplay features. You can also update to see if you got a The Sims delivery and you can also adjust your UI within the accessibility as well as enabling and disabling mods. So I'm gonna just briefly go through all these features here just as a little refresher because you never know, you might be missing out on some opportunities. First things first, graphics. As you can see right now, I'm playing in full screen because I'm also recording my screen and when I'm not actually involved in a lot of gameplay and I'm just doing little tutorials like this, I like to change my resolution to a little higher resolution than 1080p. And the only reason why is because I like to be able to go in to take the footage that I record in 2K and bring it down into a 1080 so I can kind of scale in and out with my footage without it being as pixelated as if it was in 1080, if that makes any sense. If you're a video editor, you will appreciate that I'm showing you this. Now, as you can see, these are my settings. Now, also, I want to point out that I have a pretty powerful machine. So my machine is pretty capable of handling very high ultra graphics. Now you can adjust this according to your gameplay or your capture card or your graphics card. So you can kind of adjust this. So if you notice it's lagging or something like that, try to bring some of this stuff down because a lot of these details you don't really need just for gameplay. And when you're in audio, you can kind of adjust different types of things. As you can see here, I have music turned off. And a lot of times I don't even use the UI sound because as you can tell, you know, you can hear the UI sound. So usually when I'm creating content, I usually have the UI sound off. 
Also, music's a cool little feature because it say you there's a song that you like in a specific category. You can kind of go down here and find the song that you like and you can hit play. As you know, we just got a new R&B station. So if you were just curious to see who the artists were or if you wanted to listen to the song in its entirety, you can just click on R&B and then here, here's your new R&B station with the song. A lot of people don't even realize that you can actually go into your game settings and go into music and actually listen to the songs. And then here are some of your gameplay options. Like you can start out with the Sims 3 camera. So if you're so used to Sims 3 camera features, you can just automatically click this. So when you start into your games, it'll also give you Sim 3 camera by default. I don't use Sim 3 camera. I'm all about that Sims 4 camera. Now put in the comments, are you team Sims 3 camera or are you team Sims 4 camera? Where are my Sims 4 camera peeps at? It's an ongoing battle. It seems like a lot of people use that Sims 3 cam. I'm gonna just fly through this. Same thing with screen capture. If you want like a less compressed version of your photos, I usually like to leave this on like the highest settings. And if you wanna disable Emily, who will give you tutorials and tips and tricks throughout the gameplay, you can go in here into the tutorials and tips and you can pretty much disable the guidance system. As I mentioned earlier, Sims delivery, you can check for new content just to make sure you're up to date. Now, other is very important. Now, this feature is gonna allow you to view your custom content and allow you to enable and disable custom content mods and script mods. So I'm always making sure people, cause I get a lot of questions like my mods aren't working, I can't do this, can't do that. So what I like to do is make sure people go into their game options, go into other and make sure they have their script, script mods allowed and their enable custom content mods allowed because sometimes when you first start off with your game, it might be unchecked. So once you check these off, every time you open up your Sims 4 game, it'll always be you know, allowed or enabled. So you don't have to keep going in and doing this. Accessibility is another fun thing that I like to do, especially when I'm doing tutorials. So I like to make sure that my UI scale is pretty much where I want it. So I see how I can adjust this. You know, you can make it as big as you want. Um, again, this is for screenshot purposes. It could be for if you're playing the game and you wanna make sure your UI features are big when you're, when you're recording and capturing your screen. So that way when your audience is watching, it can also see what's happening with your, with your interface. So what I like to do when I know I'm gonna be recording stuff and I'm gonna be also using, utilizing the UI, I like to get it to where, just where I can be able to see it. Now keep in mind, I'm filming my screen in, in 2K, so this is gonna look real nice when I like scale in, at least to like, even at 100% on a 1080 timeline is gonna look real nice. It's gonna look nice and crispy. And that's pretty much everything that we can do in regards to the menu screen and to our game options menu screen. Now I'm gonna hop into the game real quick just so I can show you some of the features that I weren't able to show you within the game options. So now as you can tell, now we can go into gameplay, environment, and pack settings. So autonomy is basically your Sims can do whatever it is that they want. So with autonomy on full, this is gonna mean that your Sim is gonna just go ahead and do whatever they need to do to take care of their needs or to take up some time. So if they're just sitting there idle, they'll go and do something, whether it's watching TV, doing a couple push-ups, maybe having a conversation with a nearby other Sim, or just taking care of their needs. Typically when I'm playing the game, I actually like autonomy off. Cause I like being able to tell my Sims exactly what to do, when and where. These game options, when it comes to gameplay, environment, and pack settings, is only for that particular save file. So if you got multiple save files, it's best to come in here and just make sure that your uh, game options are up to par to what you want for that save file. Also with auto age, you can be able to have either your Sims age up when they when they're supposed to, or you can turn this off and they can never age up at all. You can also use this as an idea of only that active household you want your Sims to age up. So anybody outside that household, they will still stay at that same current age. I also like to disable autonomy for selected Sims sometimes. So if I have a selected Sim, I wanna be able to adjust their stuff at that time while autonomy is on. I like to, again, I like to just disable that and I also like to have autonomy off, again, depending on the household or just that save file in general. And then you, you also have your Sims lifespan. You got short, normal, long. Most people like to play in normal. I have a couple games where I like to play in long lifespan, especially if I really love that family. So I'll definitely put it in long. 
and this also shows you how many current sims you have you can also set your maximum sim count so if you want it to you can go all the way up to 200 this is just going to show you how many sims are going to probably load up at any given time and keep in mind you can also adjust this with mods as well i usually keep it at 80 i never see that many at a lot at one time i usually see maybe a max of maybe 20. 80 is the max recommended you also got your uh, your wants and fears if you don't want that up there you can always just adjust that turn it off if you don't want that up there you also got your build item grant gameplay effects uh I don't know why you would want that disabled, but hey, if you want that disabled, just disable it there. And if you don't want your lifestyles in there, because that's a new base game feature as well, then you can disable all that stuff. You can also go into game options and enable neighborhood stories. I know a lot of people don't like those neighborhood stories. If you don't like the neighborhood stories, you can go in here and disable that as well. Now, when you go into the environment, depending on what packs you have, you might be able to adjust certain things like the lunar cycle, different season um, options, and your snowy escape options as well. Also in pack settings, depending on what packs you have, you're gonna have more features that you can disable. Um, if you don't like the fame system, you can disable the fame stuff. You can also disable the NPC voting. You can also en enable the, the footprint. If you don't like your worlds being impacted by the environment, whether it's like a good environment or industrial environment, you can go down here and, and, and disable all that. Same with cottage living. If you don't want animals aging, you can disable that so your, your animals can live, uh, live for eternity. And also you can limit how many werewolves spawn into different other worlds and stuff like that. High school years, you can enable the Agni or NPC relationship autonomy. And then with growing together, you can also disable like career layoffs and self-discovery and stuff like that. I also get a lot of questions from the supervillains asking, well, how do you reset your game? I don't know what that means. So simply what you do is just basically exit out of the game. You need a full exit out and open in the game. That's considered a restart. And that, my friend, is a basic tutorial on how to navigate through the game options and the menu screen in The Sims 4. But next week, we're going to dive into a little bit of gameplay, like exploring build by options and going in the gallery and, and saving things to the gallery. We'll do a little bit of that next week. Till next time, I'll see you when I see you. Dag, dag. In Sims 4 Mod News, MC Command Center goes mobile. Modify your virtual life with a tap. Watch Nard Villain showcase the app's real life example. Get ready to unleash your creativity. Dang. Let's try this. All right, sweet. I'm about to play and there ain't nobody out here to watch me. Alright, let's let's fix this. There we go. Now, this is what I'm talking about. What do you mean my car was declined? I got money in there. Hold on. Yeah, run that back. Woo, I gots to go. This line's long. There's no line at the ladies' room, though. Yeah, let's try that. Woo, man, I wish I was a little bit younger, man. I'm getting a little too old for all this. Hmm, let's try that. Dag, dag. All right, tune in next week because we're going to have breaking news on the Behind the Sims stream. In addition, we'll also have more tips for beginners. Also, we're going to have the wrestling match between Eliza Pancakes and Agnes Crumple Bottom. Now keep that plum bob green because you know it ain't that hard. Till next time, I'll see you when I see you. Dag, dag.
แดง